Welcome to Transfer of Wisdom, everyone. For those that don't know who I am, Suzanne with Transformation, and you are Transfer of Wisdom, which is a public education, both for practitioners as well as public, to learn more about alternative health care, that you have an alternative with education on taking care of yourself. So just a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to ask that you silence your cell phones. So if you haven't done that already, that would be wonderful. We are filming this, and it goes on our website, and we are Facebook Live as well, too, for those that can't be here. Um, restrooms right around the corner, and of course, we do have food and beverage in the back. <laughs> All right, with that said, holidays. Did anybody get the Facebook post that says something crazy like eight more Mondays until Christmas? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so well, how does that make you feel? Anxious. Anxious, stressed. And yet it's the holidays. It is supposed to be a time of celebration, family, family gatherings, good food, presents, celebrating the Lord. All these are very positive things. And yet, there's stress. And it doesn't come just from that, as far as, for me, it's always the year's coming to an end, right? So if that's my stress, it's like, holy smokes, where did the year go? But it's all about expectations as well, I think. <clears throat> and we get stressed out about whether it's our family coming, our friends coming, how clean is the house, how good is the food, what do I need to bring, how am I going to get there? on and on. <laughs> I gotta pack up the kids. <laughs> you know, all of this stuff. And so how do we process that? And how does that actually affect not only our own enjoyment, but how we show up with others? And how does that actually affect our health? <clears throat> so I'm super excited to introduce Jennifer Doktovich. Now Jennifer's been here before and we've talked about nutrition and stress. But for those of you that don't know, Jennifer actually is a trained actress, and she's been an actress in New York of all places. High stress, that just stresses me right there, for over 30 years. But her love for fitness led her also into nutrition, and she's a certified nutritional counselor and a functional health coach here in Texas. So she's kind of married her love for type A personalities, because <laughs> I don't have any experience with that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe performance and expectation and has married that with <coughs> her fitness, with her nutrition. And most recently, I'm going to make sure I get this right, she's a certified food and spirit practitioner. Mm -hmm. So when you blend all of this together, there is an emotional healing aspect that I personally, and we've talked a lot about this, that I personally think gets neglected when we talk about true healing. There's an emotional component to why someone is seeking good help or why they're not letting go of something or why they react a certain way to certain situations. And so tonight we get to hear from Jennifer <coughs> about not only the whys but also what we can do about it. So help me welcome Jennifer Dockage. <laughs> I'm super excited because it. this is like actually a year to the day, maybe it's tomorrow actually, that I did this talk, but I did the talk on all seven systems of food and spirit, which is a lot of information and very overwhelming. So I decided as we approach the holidays, and I wanted to access this information in a different way, to take it down to one system and then really drill into it, really kind of mine it because this is such an exciting program. I love Food and Spirit, and I'm excited to share this one aspect with you and <coughs> link it in to the holidays. So with that being said, uh, getting rooted, grounded into the holiday season, what that means, and staying sane, because as Suzanne said, there's something about the holidays which is really exciting and wonderful, but for a lot of people, it can also be very overwhelming and it could be a time of introspection and maybe even being alone and isolation. So we have all this media out there that says how wonderful the holidays is, but it, it may not be wonderful for everyone. So there's a reason for that. 
Go ahead and do that a little bit. Okay. <coughs> I did this little word all and I threw out some words. I mean, you can just think about it for a second. What do the holidays mean to you? Shopping, and there may be a long time, and traditions, and family, and community, and tribe, and food. That's what it means. Sugar, stress, money, and I spend a lot of money. You know, that that's the thought process around the holidays for a lot of people. But it can also be really positive children, laughter, music, tradition. <coughs> so I talked a lot about this last year, but the cellular aspects of what each system means. So I'm only going to focus on the root, and the root is the very bottom. It's the most masculine of all the systems, it's the most physical. <coughs> And it represents DNA synthesis, um, cell health, um, protein, amino acids. And on the energetic level, it, it represents safety, survival, and boundaries. So that's the only area that we're going to look at tonight. So people ask me, well, what is food spirit mean? And it's a kaleidoscope of health. So, when I talk about food and spirit, I don't just talk about the food, and I don't just talk about the physiology. All very important. But I'm looking at all these other aspects of here. Um, this is the food part of it, but it's also affirmations, meditation, um, thinking, what our thoughts can lead to in terms of our health. <laughs> Healthy food planning, color in our food, color in our lives. What is this? I, I had a dream about color. What does that mean? And then I asked a question about where you were in your life, and you're like, yes. I'm like, that's interesting. Okay. And again, as I go through this tonight, I want to just give a disclaimer that I'm going to be talking about um, deficiencies and excess. And what is it? What is deficient for one person may not be deficient for another. It's just an overview. So as I get into it, you'll see with the quiz. I'm going to ask you some questions, and you'll kind of answer your own question. So food and spirit is the, the fusion of science and spirituality. It's not just about physiology, but it's about personality, psychology, emotions, energy, metaphor, symbolism. And it's brought together for a complete healing experience. So if I said, if you eat these foods, you're going to get completely healthy, well, it will definitely help you. But is that always true? No, not necessarily, right? Um, but if I was to look at someone's personality, <coughs> the psychology behind the thinking process, and what foods they're eating, what supplements they're taking, and fuse it all together, it might bring about a greater possibility, a kaleidoscope of health. And food and spirit is also very collaborative, so it brings together Chinese medicine, Arabic medicine, <coughs> Western, Eastern philosophy, it's everything. Because I don't believe that healing is just one component. It's mind, body, spirit. It's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. You can't separate it. If somebody is ill physically, there's an energetic reason, there's a physical reason, there's a <coughs> mental reason, an emotional reason, probably behind that, especially with autoimmune. So this is the root. This is, this is the root system. And these are the themes. I'm going to read this out because I know it's a little bit. It's red. So first of all, it is red. It's my favorite color, by the way. <laughs> red is, yeah, I can't tell. Red is energetically power, sex, money. So when I went on auditions, I always wore red because I knew that it energized me and it made me stand out. <coughs> so that's one of the reasons why I love red so much. But underneath red, there's some other things about it. Uh, it's an instinct color. It's fight or flight. Um, it represents <coughs> stability and presence, trust, boundaries, safety, survival, tribe and community. It's also of the earth, soil, grounding, minerals, literally being grounded, literal boundaries. And identity, who am I? So, I asked that question, tell me your name again. Shannon. Shannon, I'm so sorry, okay, Shannon. I asked you, have you been going through an identity mm -hmm. change? You were like, yes. <laughs> Who am I is a big part of the root. Mm -hmm. um, it's also the first 10 years, and I think even preconception of the life, of, of your life. So it's childhood, it's 
ACEs, it's trauma, um, it's personality disorders. All of that starts at the root, it's the very beginning. So in the food spectrum, it's red foods which have vitamin C, and as I get into it, the vitamin C is important because the root also represents the adrenals as well as the immune system. Uh, it's all the root veggies, so of the ground, the parsnips and the radishes and beets, which is of course a red food. Red blood cells, foods that feed um, oxygen to the cells. Minerals, dark leafy greens, anything that's going to bring in calcium and phosphorus and iron and zinc, all these trace minerals and proteins, and proteins meaning animal protein as well as plant protein. Um, in eating those foods, Foods, when you're feeling maybe a little spacey, think about this for a second. Say you haven't eaten all day. It's been too long. If you get a little spacey and you don't feel grounded, instinctively, what do you might crave? What might you crave? Sugar. Well, yeah, you probably do for that quick energy. It's probably not the best idea. Okay, what other foods? What other of those foods up here? What would you buy? be protein. Protein. Protein is the thing that stabilizes you, it feeds the cells and it keeps you grounded. You can overdo it, but generally speaking, it's the protein that you need. But yes, we do reach for that sugar thing. That's a fire sign thing, too, by the way. So, in Chinese medicine, as we pull all these elements together, uh, it's a masculine sign, it's of the earth, so a lot of the aspects are um, earth, fire, air, and water. This is a masculine earth sign. And it's the first system, first system. So it's the most um, physical. It's all about what's going on in the physical body. So it will cover in terms of um, health. It covers autoimmune diseases, probably cancer. It's considered an autoimmune in some cases. Uh, stress. So adrenals. It definitely handles the fight or flight, which is part of that safety. When you don't feel safe, those adrenals go right into overdrive, right? Um, fight or flight, <coughs> blood cells, I say ACEs, adverse childhood issues in the, in the early years, uh, childhood trauma, DNA. Um, I was talking to something about autoimmune specifically, uh, fibro. Fibro is a really interesting <coughs> one, and there's almost always an emotional component. And whenever I've talked to a client and they said they have fibro, the first thing I ask is anything happened in your childhood? Nine times out of ten, it's something really huge like sexual trauma. Is it fibroid or fibro? Fibro. Fibromyalgia. Uh, okay, yeah. sorry. Fibromyalgia. Okay. I think fibro is a short I'm like, fibro, I've never heard of that. What is that? Most of us are practitioners in here, so I'm okay. like, I'm doing it shorthand, but you're okay. right, it's fibromyalgia. Okay. Okay. Uh, the fibro would be a flow issue. Okay. So, that's, that's good. Good, good, good thing to point out. Um, so, DNA, skin, trunk. Think of a tree with the roots, right? That, that keeps that tree stable. So everything from feet up to trunk. A little bit of sacrum, but that's getting into another aspect. But this lower body is very much what it represents the root. Again, um, I was asked these questions with my clients <coughs> past the health issues. Where in your life do you not feel stable or safe? what's happened recently, what happened before. Generally, there's a personality aspect to that. It's childhood, but it could also be something that just happened. You know, I feel like, oh, I, I just got married, and I'm, whew, it's okay, right? <coughs> we go, we're gonna go through these aspects, we roll through these aspects our entire life. There's always something going on. So, now I'm gonna go back to the holidays, and what may be happening in Holly, what, what things you might experience that bring joy or don't bring joy. Um, and the holidays are very stressful, and just kind of brought us some of those words. It's very busy, it's very overwhelming, there's a lot going on, you want to please everybody. Um, but the aspects of the root that combine with the holidays are tradition and ancestry. So maybe you're Irish, and you just you do have an Irish Christmas. I, I I'm English, or my mom's so I'm half English, so my mom's English, and so every Christmas we do um, hot roast and, and the Yorkshire pudding. We, it's a tradition, but that's also a root thing. 
Um, <coughs> really, really important. I can't stress this enough. The root is about boundaries, and it's okay to say no over Christmas, over the holidays. So I have 20 parties to go to, or there's an expectation that has to be met on some level with your kids, husband, wife. No is a very important word. We probably don't use it enough as adults. We have to follow suit with the two-year-olds. They look, they, they know how to use it, <laughs> right? Yeah. No. Yeah. So we have to learn to say no. Um, and then getting movement into our lives, too. And that's going to be different for everyone, but nature, walking, um, yoga, and meditation. can't stress that enough because meditation will change the neural pathway. Uh, there's an app that I like, um, Insight Timer. You put it on your phone, you know what I'm talking about? I do that 15 minutes a night before I go to bed just to get my body calm again. Mm -hmm. These are things that you can do, especially during this time. Of <coughs> and then looking at core beliefs, and we all have them, and this is really tricky, but. Um, Ask yourself certain questions about what's going on with you during the holidays. If there's something that you're struggling with, am I alone? Maybe that tape is, I am alone. So maybe the question is, how do we reframe these tapes that come up that can make the holidays challenging? Maybe it's something as simple as, I have everything I need right behind me. Um, getting together with a tribe, with a community, because that's another word thing. Making sure that you aren't alone, spending time with friends, creating a family if you don't have family nearby. My family's not nearby. I'm, I'm not myself. So I make sure that I have a tribe mm -hmm. so that it becomes enjoyable. Sometimes it's even more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that. <laughs> um, so the, the, some, these are healing principles that I really, really love, and I think I have them in the but these are little mantras, and the root is all about being present in the moment, staying in the moment, feeling what you feel, <coughs> what's going on, asking your body what's going on, if you're having a food craving, learning to eat with instinct. Why do I want that food? Maybe I'm craving the craving protein. I'm craving um, vegetables right now. Follow those instincts. We've, we've kind of been learning over the last several decades to let either other people make a decision for us or eat mindlessly. This is something about being mindful, staying in that moment and staying present. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite aspects to talk about in food and spirit is that each aspect, each system has a deficiency and it has an excessive. And again, what is excessive for one person may be perfectly balanced for another. What is deficient in one person may be excessive in another. So these are sort of generalities. <coughs> I'll just give you some overviews of what this is. So a person who is deficient in a root aspect will have, a, you know, you all know people like this, okay? Um, they don't really have an opinion. They kind of like, oh, that's your opinion, that's my opinion too. <coughs> right? A little bit thin skin. Somebody who doesn't mm, takes things very personally. Um, by the way, you can't be deficient in a root and be an actor in New York. That's not going to work. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be finished. Um, the, how it manifests is thin hair, brittle nails, <laughs> thin nails. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Very thin bodies. Um, maybe having a hard time putting weight on. Um, I wish I, I could be your question. Not rooted. Um, I, I will say this is really for me. I grew up around the world. Until I was about 16, my father was an engineer, and so we traveled all the time. And I thought everybody did that. I, I, we lived every few years. So what I realized later on was I had a harder time making friends because so more energetically, I'm like, what's the point? I'm going to get uprooted. So that can cause a root issue in adulthood, where you just kind of feel like I don't, I'm afraid to kind of go there because I'm just going to get hurt or take it, they're going to go away. So th those are the kinds of things that you want to look at and how it affects your health. Because it affects your belief system and your belief system affects your physiology. Um, so in the deficiency, there's, this is where mental health issues, specifically personality disorders, cluster Bs, obsessive, borderline, um, 
narcissistic personality will be kind of in the deficiency of a root because they haven't had a groundedness. Um, doesn't trust easily, rejects tradition, doesn't have a lot of friends, is very delicate. This is the this is the division part. Now the excessive part is kind of the opposite. That's the person who is my way or the highway, very opinionated, thick skin, which can be really good, but also very rigid. I I, I don't want to hear your opinion. Um, home can be cluttered, have a hard time letting go of things. Whereas the division might have very little stuff, maybe very sparse. Where excessive is very cluttered. Um, can be very conservative and rigid in views. Um, it's always my favorite. It needs a crisis to make a change. How many of you have patients like that? <coughs> like they have to fall apart before they go, you know what, I'm going to do something different now because nothing's working. That could be a root issue and it could be somebody who's a little bit excessive. Um, and you can ask these questions. You get to know, it's like, see if there's anything else that's going on there. Uh, homebody. This one deficient doesn't eat enough protein. This one needs weight. You know, I'm, I eat meat three times a day, seven days a week. It's a little too much meat protein. A little too much. So what's the balance look like? Um, and again, this is not a cut in stone thing. So what's going to work for one person will not work for another. Um, but when you're work, when you're balanced, you tend to be a little more open-minded. Um, your family and your community are important to you. Your stress is under control, meaning you have stress. But maybe you know how to reframe it. Um, that took me 10 years, a lot of supplements, a lot of therapy. <laughs> so what I was going to say right out there. It took a lot of work to learn how to manage stress. But most of it, as I realized, my adrenals were 90% strung out from emotional stress. When I got the emotions under control, but enough, the adrenals started to heal. It didn't matter how many supplements I was taking. If my emotional stress wasn't under control, that would be under control. Um, let's see, boundaries. That's my favorite thing now. I love telling somebody, not okay. <coughs> no. Have a good day. <laughs> That's not hard about being a manager. It's like when people ride all over you, and you're like, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> with, with a smile and a sense of humor, but no. <laughs> Normal body weight, so you're not too heavy, you're not too thin, you're not malnourished. Um, oh, another thing, food disorders in the deficient are uh, anorexia, bulimia. That's actually very common. Um, not being able to uh, assimilate food emotionally or Okay, so this is the fun part. See, this is a little quiz right here. And I want you to take a few minutes. And again, when you look at this quiz, you ha might have one aspect that's completely great, but another aspect might be a little deficient. So if this not an exact science, you can see how it works, you can rate it, then I want you to add up the numbers in the section, then add up the numbers as a total. You should have a pen. You don't have a pen, let me know. I have more. Yeah, and I have a pen. Sorry, Facebook Live. Um, I'll have yeah. this, if you want, I'm going to say this right now, if you want the test, let me know, and we'll send it to you. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then we'll do a little share, for those of you who want to share. like you're in judgment of it. If your body, you believe your body is supporting you and it's healthy. Oh, okay. Did you see what I'm saying? I mean, it's a belief system more than anything else. Okay. You didn't think you were going to get homework, did you? It's not homework, it's just a 
it's just a little it's activity. Exercise. It's an activity. These are fun activities. <laughs> My body gets blamed. Is that inflammation? It gets inflamed. Yeah, that's part, that's it's part of the body total, but that's definitely part of the inflammation. Like like mm -hmm. Part of what represents as well is food sensitivities. So anything that's going to create an, an immune response or a negative immune response, that's all the root. That's why it's so physical. Do you know anybody who has perfect root? Because I don't. <coughs> it, I don't think it exists. Almost everybody has stress. They have adrenal, some sort of level of adrenal issues, some sort of level of immune issue, something. And then all these other issues. This is why it's the first system and why it's the most important one to address up the chain. You gotta get this one right get the other ones working properly. <laughs> total. Yeah, you can do total you can do total in the in the sections. And then you can do full total. Full total I'm not I don't find it's important right now. It's more about the sections. I am reactive and the result. I am reactive, you mean um, you get defensive very quickly. I say something, you're like, what do you, you know, you go into fight or flight, right? That's reactive. <coughs> we all know that some one person who's really defended. It's like, oh my God, take it easy. Chill. Right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, make, I want to give you a little note, below 10, is deficient, 10 to 16, or 11 to 16, I should say, 11 to 16 is balanced. Anything over 16, excessive. Oh, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so about well, so myself. Match the personality, are you a driver, <laughs> are you a type A? And I love protein. You love protein. I love protein, yes. And yes, it may be. Your body may need a little more protein. Yeah. That's the other thing. Is I surprise a lot of people when I eat protein in crowds like this. Like, you gonna fish that. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, I, I'm a big believer, and I know Deanna Minnick feels the same way about instinctive eating. You know, everybody's different. And that's why it gets very tricky to start saying, this diet is what you need to do. Yeah. Well, we're all different, and yeah. we all have our different DNA, different ancestry, and then we have our genetics, I like genetic testing, because it's important to look at the, the test and say, well, maybe keto is not the best diet for you, because maybe your body doesn't really respond well. Okay. You'll, you'll blow out your gallbladder, right? So. So tell us the ranges again. Okay, so uh, under 10 is deficient, 11 to 16 is balanced. And over 16 is an excessive. There's no right or wrong. You didn't fail. Well, I got an A because I got a 97. <laughs> <laughs> so when I look at that number, I think there's a little bit of root stuff going on there. I know. You're like, that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to have C plus, right? But again, there's there's no just. This is how I like to work because this is also how I work backwards with the physiology. And I'm like, there, there's, a, there's a reason why the physiology is there too. A lot of it is the emotional stuff, or the belief system, or what these aspects are. So, so you, have to, you, you can share, you can not share, you can talk to me afterward, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, so again, this system represents the immune system. Do you know any of patients that have you know, perfect immune systems? I don't think anybody has a perfect immune system. Some people have a balance. 
and he says, I, I get a tiny head cold now once a year. But how can you tell if you have a balanced immune system? Well, if you're getting sick all the time, there's probably a problem. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. If you're running to the doctor saying, oh, well, I, I'm fine, I'm, I'm healthy, but I get like antibiotics three times a year, I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, we hear that. If, here, here's the other thing, this is what I've been learning from the functional side. If you never get sick, <laughs> oh, I never get sick, ever, and you really never get sick, you may have an autoimmune start. There, there's some research on that, that you need to have a look. <laughs> Just a thought, I'm not saying you have it, but it's something to look at. You should have a little head cold once a year. You're immune, you want to activate your immune system. Yeah, I'll tell you what my ex fiance said in the year ago. He's yeah. Australian, so I have to do the Australian accent. But he said, Can I, Jane, when we have kids, just gonna throw them in a sandbox and let them pee all over each other? <laughs> That's how they get their immune system. I'm like, That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> or just let them dig in dirt in the garden. You're like, It's a child abuse, but <laughs> get out of jail. I just thought it was awesome. I was like, That's pretty funny. And now, this was long before I knew anything about functional medicine, but he has a point, yeah, yeah. right? We're trying, we're, we're trying to anesthetize our kids by giving them hand wipes and right. Let yeah. them play yeah. in That's the, the dirt. Worst you can do. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna do it, and then they put it in their yeah. mouth, right? Immediately. And you well, want them to put them in their mouth. Well, the dirt is so grounded. Let them play in the dirt. dirt. And <laughs> touch things and whatever, because that actually strengthens their the immune system, system. Yeah. right? You're like, okay, oh, and you, don't, don't be a helicopter parent and go, oh my God, he's touched dirt. It's gonna be, I gotta run to the doctor now. Like, really? Just keep him away from the dog poop. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not a good idea. That's the trick. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, we've talked a little bit about this. There's the stress and the cortisol piece. You all are practicing, so I don't have to go there. A little cortisol manages inflammation. A lot of cortisol is a problem over time, right? It's not just burned out adrenals, but now you are running the risk of ruining the immune system. So that's where autoimmune start. Nobody woke up and said, oh my God, I got Hashimoto's. It just happened overnight. Didn't happen. It happened for a variety of reasons. Uh, this is a big one for me, the, the fourth one. Life toxicity. Mm -hmm. Relationships, mm -hmm. jobs, work-life balance. <coughs> if you're in a bad relationship, get out. I, I, I know that sounds easy, I've been there. Just leave, because your, your new system is getting stressed. Mm -hmm. If you're in a job that you don't like, figure it out and see if you can get out of that too. Mm -hmm. Life is short, you guys, it's short, be yeah. happy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I know I make it sound very easy. That's it's a pleasant thing after 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, healing gut with, of course, enzymes. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to say that, I have not just a plug, but because I've noticed my own health change dramatically in the four years that I've been doing it. And since I did that study, it's been four years. Um, but also um, things like marshmallow root, uh, oregano, olive leaf, these are all great herbs and um, supplements for berberine. Yep, all of these for the immune system. Um, especially when somebody is under a lot of stress, it's really important to support their system right now as they get out of it. Um, inflammatory foods, anti-inflammatory diets, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, casein, dairy, mm -hmm. gluten, corn, all these things. Getting the compliance from your patients can be really, really hard, but once you get that and attack it, and they see results, their immune system will definitely. <coughs> um, and, and the healing things, even over the holidays, so walking in nature, meditation, um, community and tribe, that's the piece that's really important with the root system. Getting, get, getting together with family and friends. Also the food aspect. So one complaint that I get over the holidays is, I, I don't want to go with all the sugar. I have to deal with you know, a lot of the alcohol, all the sugar. How do you manage that? Okay, try to eat before you go to a party where there's food everywhere. And if you're nibbling, because that's always a stressor, right? And you don't know what it is. But I also like to create parties with people in which there's a potluck. This is what I started doing, and I love this. Everybody brings a healthy dish, and they write the recipe on a recipe card in front of the dish. Potluck. So fun. Right? Yeah, so now, it, now you just said it. Now it's fun. Yeah. It's enjoyable. You're eating healthy food, and then, can I get that recipe? Yep. Take a picture of it. I've started doing that, and I can't tell you how much fun it is, because everybody's in community, everybody's participating, and it's 
I heard that. I think it's a good idea, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I think that's the way to reframe the holidays is having joy. Um, spend it with people that you really love. Create your own family. Create that community. And we're foodies in here, right? This is all about health. Share something you haven't shared before. Bring it to a party. Do a potluck. I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and balancing, balancing the um, adrenals. You guys know all of this stuff. The diet is huge. The sugar is huge. What? Okay, we're around sugar, right? From here on, from yesterday through the fourth of January, sugar. it's sugar central. And learning to say no, I always end up dropping a couple pounds over the holidays because I really, that's the most disciplined time that I'm like, no. Because not only do you not want to rank, it, it, I don't want to gain 10 pounds or whatever. I just don't want to feel tired. Mm -hmm. and, you know, a glass of wine's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so vitamin C is really important for the adrenals, right? <coughs> it's also all the red foods. So red peppers, goji berries, cherries, raspberries, uh, cranberries. Thinking of all the red foods. I don't. Wine. I don't. Wine. <laughs> Wine. <laughs> it's actually a drink of Okay, that's why. Yeah, um, tomatoes, lycopene, mm -hmm. antioxidants. This is a big thing about the antioxidants. Um, also, herbs, you know, rhodiola, Siberian ginseng, ashwagandha, these are all great for the adrenals. Licorice is great, it's one of my favorites. Um, and I, I, keep st I keep saying it, but I'm just going to keep saying it because it's important for the immune system and it's important for the adrenals. Say no. If you don't feel like going to a party, don't give yourself a guilt trip. If you don't feel like hanging out with certain people, don't. Um, even on Christmas Day, I've had to learn to go, these people stress me out, I'm going to say no. I'm, I'm going to go see them. Self-care is really important with this aspect. Um, your color, but that doesn't mean Skittles. No, <laughs> no Skittles. Just eat your color because all these have phytonutrients in it, right? And the red has vitamin C, and vitamin C is good for the adrenals. So I'm kind of sort of I've already stated a lot of this, um, but the foods that are um, part of the root system, protein, of course. Blueberries are very important, but they're part of the insight. It's not it's not a root food, because it's not the color is not there. No, 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 no. It's very important. Right. Yeah. It's very important, but it's a different aspect. It's not the root aspect. It's actually an insight aspect. It's up, up the chain. We're, the, the, the colors that we're talking about are red, because we're focusing on the red color for root. So blueberries are very important. I mean, it doesn't mean don't eat other foods, by the way. We're just focusing on one system. Mm -hmm. So we're just focusing on red foods, protein foods, mineral foods. Leafy greens are, and, and, and the root foods are um, beets. Beets, of course, are a red food, but they're also a root food. Oh my god. You like beets? Go for it. I have a lot of foods there. What? Beets with goat in a feta. I don't care. I don't care. Like chef. Very good. It's so good. Um, and minerals, so looking even nuts and seeds, which is more of a flow food, but anything with minerals that has zinc in it. Um, of course, all your dark green leaves are <coughs> K that have calcium. You get, you get moms going, well, they have to have milk because it has a calcium in it. Mm -hmm. No, actually, all your leafy vegetables have your calcium in it. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's just education. Without the casein of morphine, you know, it would be Right. I was like, oh my gosh, you don't need that. You can survive. They can survive on that uh, without that. Um, so, and yeah, again, eating organically is really, really important. I'm, I'm speaking to the flyer here. I don't, I don't need to, you guys already know this. Eliminating GMOs, eating an organic diet uh, will help a compromise your immune system or help enhance your immune system. Um, red is a grounding color. I, I don't know if it's because it's just earth terrain when you think like red soil. Kind of interesting. Again, we're metaphor. Um, I was thinking of a word tonight. I was trying to figure out. Like metaphors are really important with this uh, modality. So in the fire sign, it's all about work-life balance, and we'll say things with fire like, "Where are you burned out?" Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a lot of this metaphor with the root system. It's all about um, I don't feel stable. 
feel <coughs> ungrounded. That's a grounding is a, is a physical word for this. So where in your life do you not feel stable? You know, anything that activates fight or flight, like fear of not having money, all of that, if it activates that stability aspect, it's a root issue. Um, all the red, and this is in your handout too, but uh, all the red foods are rich in vitamin C. <coughs> um, like a peanut, of course, and tomatoes, and probably a few different things there. Um, red bell peppers, uh, very important for fire and trees. And how, so when you have an overactive, anybody here have an overactive root? Yeah. <laughs> Those mine too, you're to kind of pull back a little bit. It's usually type A personality. Um, the people who are drivers, it's a, driving a driver is a great thing, the, drive, the world means driver. We just have to be careful not to drive our just from the ground. So again, um, if you're a big protein person, <coughs> eat lots and lots of animal protein, maybe you need to shift it up and look at some plant proteins as well, yeah. balance out a little bit. Kind of um, food ruts are big with this. So eating the same foods all the time. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> it's, we're all guilty of it. We all do it. We're not. Okay. Yay. I'm not. That's good. <laughs> um, I'm not guilty of being the same thing all the time. That's good. Most people. Too many different things all the time. That's, and of course, the more you can do that, more you don't get food sensitivity, right? If, you t if somebody eats chicken all the time, every single day, well, chicken's healthy, but the problem is then you're on the risk of getting the food sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, supporting the body with supplements and enzymes, it's a big one, all right? Always a beauty fan of that. I love emotion box. Um, I love keeping maybe a, a, a week or two week journal about where you are in each part of the day. Uh, even at the end of the day, you can say, this is where I, this is where I was in the morning, where I was. If anything happened, they see if you can make a connection of what happened. You, got, you suddenly got triggered by something, what happened? See if you can get a pattern there, because that will help you a little bit in terms of safety and survival. Um, thinking about your interactions, um, the question that Christine has, like, what is reactive and defended? Are you quick to kind of support <coughs> something? Do you think about, or are you, or do, do you not react? And there's another side of that, which is maybe you need to step up a little bit. Maybe you need to have better boundaries, right? Um, tracking stress, tracking priorities. Um, I love meditation, I can't say that enough. Tai Chi, walking. We don't have a lot of nature in Houston, it's kind of my pet peeve. But when I'm in Seattle and I do I'm always like taking walks in the forest and forest bathing. You move to the woodlands. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah, that's what yeah. I do. That's <laughs> no easy answer. Um, <laughs> you can both ways. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, like you can go for a walk, you can go for a bike ride there. It's yeah. probably a lot safer. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. Think about what, where do you not feel control in your life? Control is a big aspect for the word, especially the excessive part. Um, and what makes you feel angry? Um, clear up, this is my thing. I'm fully guilty of this. Clear up the clutter. I'm a clutter girl. My, I, I was raised by a family who likes to save paper. <laughs> paper, paper, paper. So there's piles of paper. <laughs> That's cluttered me. And does it make you anxious? If you're a if oh, one person. person. Right, so that's that's something <laughs> that you can kind of get a hold of. I could really Oh, no, no. No, throwing away makes me anxious. Yeah, yeah, clutter makes me anxious. Yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like I might need it. Yep, very well. Yeah. The yeah. underactive yeah. roots is the same thing. We're going to go backwards a little part. bit. And <laughs> maybe you're not getting enough protein. No, I don't, you don't eat a lot of protein. So that could be also the vegan type, the person who, like, I'm not going to sit there and make a judgment on diets because everybody's a little bit different. <laughs> But I guarantee you, with a vegan person, where they're getting the protein? Maybe they have a lot of plant protein, but maybe they're having problems digesting the phytates and some of the other compounds in there that can be a problem. So we've got to get them exploring other protein, and that's hard because they're vegan. So that's something to think about. Um, getting minerals in, in enough different food sources. Um, are you present in your body? Are you grounded in your body? That, that person that is kind of spacey, just sort of like you have to say things like four different times because they just like what? <laughs> that could be a lack of protein, but it's also maybe they're not present in their body. Well, they have a lot of toxins. They have a lot of toxins. <laughs> also, I go back and do a little bit of a history. If there's been any kind of abuse, specifically sexual trauma, um, 
they may not feel connected to their body. A lot of people, a lot of women that I've talked to who had that happen, and there was a molestation or something in childhood, what do they do? They protect their body by patting it, getting mm. obese. Mm. So think about like where, if they're eating mindlessly, they're not really connected to their body, they don't want to be connected. I don't want to be connected. <coughs> that could be a danger. They're not, they're not safe in their body. That was a part of that question of safety in the body. There's a lot of different ways that people are not safe in their body. And that's one of them. Um, what, what keeps you feeling safe and secure? That the deficient person is usually not feeling safe. They don't really struggle with friendships. A lot of things going on there. Uh, food disorders. Anorexia is 100% a deficiency in their group. Bulimia is a deficiency. Uh, so yeah, they, same thing, meditation. Journaling, emotion thing, all this importance from both um, parts of the root, underactive or deficient uh, or excessive. Um, one of the artists that uh, Deanna has, she does these paintings in each system, and I love her painting. And this is the root. She gets all these aspects this tree, and there's even like a heart, but it's red, and there's a grounding and meditation. <laughs> So, people who are balanced in the root, and I feel like, I will tell you, I feel pretty balanced in my root, but there's probably an aspect or two that is a little weak that I'm still working on. Because that's always a process, right? You might be balanced for a while and something happens and you're all unbalanced. So, you're always kind of correcting <coughs> things in your mind and supporting the body at some level. Um, my favorite affirmation is saying, I am present. Breathing that in. I feel like I'm safe in my body and I have all the community and the support that I need. Just that big really um, And yeah, I'm, one thing that I, I can't fully express enough is that people who've gone through really difficult trauma, this is not therapy. This is meant to be used in conjunction with all healing aspects. But if somebody's gone through a whole lot, I always recommend therapy. Always, always, always. Not who I am, I don't do that. But I, I think the more modalities you can introduce to somebody, whether it's food, it's chiropractic, it's naturopathic, um, it'll speak to different people in different ways. And you might need three or four modalities to really get you know healthy. The body is your temple. Is your temple. Um, before I get into this, I want to try a little extra, another little exercise. You can just turn over the paper, and I want to play this little game. It's called laddering. And ladder technique is basically getting you out of your head and seeing if there's a correlation between the themes in your life. So I'm just going to say one specific word about 20 times. And after you say it, don't think about it, what word pops into, into your head. I can say the word home and maybe it's bird. Write bird down. I'm going to say it 20 times and see if there's a theme that pops up. The word that I'm going to use, I know it's called laddering. It's an emotional technique, it's called ladder. Um, the word I'm using is tradition. So I'm going to say this 20 times and you're going to write it down. So here we go. Tradition. 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 <coughs> Tradition. 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 
kids, you can play at home. <laughs> the idea is to get out of your head, just whatever pops in, pops in. Any, any interesting things that come up, any words that come up that families repeat at home. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. that's great. I had a lot about food. <laughs> you had a lot about food? It's okay. <laughs> that was the name <laughs> for our family, though. Yeah. Go back. What's interesting, you don't have to do this right now, but what you can do is you can go back and see if you can write a story using all the words that you can make. I've done, I had to do this for the summer. I was like, the weirdest stuff comes out. But it's just, and it's, we're not, not going to worry about that right now, but what I wanted to see if there are any parallels, any things that keep coming up. That means it's rooted in the body. Just kind of interesting. So, for those of you who are practitioners, one thing I was talking about um, the last couple of weeks with Tiana was doing something called compliance coaching, and doing remote coaching for your practice. A lot of people are very busy, a lot of doctors are very busy, they don't have the staff to do that, it's one extra thing. <coughs> and one of the things that I'm going to try to make a test is a way to take some of that off you and use food and spirit with it. So this is a piece where maybe there's a reason why they're not wanting to be compliant. Or they start something, it's gung ho, and then there's a taper off. Or there's a plateau in health, right? That happens all the time. You plateau in health, and then we don't, we don't go to the next level. Well, there's something else going on. So what, the way I defined it was a compliance coach is the liaison between patient and practitioner. The coach supports the doctor, reinforcing the program to the patient, answering questions, and covering hurdles and obstacles while maintaining direct contact with the doctor via reports and phone calls. And it can be remote. We even have somebody in Minnesota doing this, but it can be done remotely. By the way, I do a lot of food and spirit coaching, remote, via set. So this is some of the ideas that I have. It can be with the Thrive program. Um, and it might be, you create a program around this, so it might be some genetic testing, it might be a little bit of blood work, and some food sensitivity testing. Uh, you'll have your supplements, of course. You'll have the diet manuals. You'll have the, the, the Thrive book. you have phone consults. Um, food and spirit consult, email touch bases, phone touch bases, anything like that. Uh, that helps the doctor really take that off the plate a little bit. Even the staff, the staff there, I don't have time, I've got a million things going on. Um, and what's great about this is it's not limited to one demographic. And then the benefits include for the practitioner, it's consistent and systemized, outcomes for success are stronger, patient compliance, that's uh, huge. Uh, it can be a revenue stream as well, because you're getting those supplements out there uh, and services out there. You can add online classes, all sorts of things, all sorts of possibilities. And the patient is just the same thing. Consistent behaviors are reinforced, uh, health journey is managed, and you're getting better results. Um, and then adding these modalities for a patient, I think is really exciting. <coughs> This was a very quick one. I mean, you can see that this is why I, I, I wanted to do all of this, but for seven systems, we'd be here all night. <laughs> so any questions for Jennifer? I threw a lot at you. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to give a number one strategy for someone who is over. <laughs> what? Who's not asking for myself? That would be like this whole line. Over. Right? <laughs> yeah, whole big train of what, what would be the... What would be a great place to start? Well, I think here's where that question helps. When I look at, I would want to look at this, I would do a full assessment on you as, as a practitioner. But I would want to look at where are you over the most? Like when I'm breaking this down. I'll tell you. Because <laughs> not about me. Um, okay, safety. Okay. So. Where in your life do you not feel safe? What what part of your life is feeling unstable? Um, just left your divorce, so that's probably I'm gonna guess it mm -hmm. um, on you know, setting the tone or going forward. Um, and I'm good. 
right now with being alone. So that perks could, but it is that question in the future. The question is, um, am, I, am I always going to be alone? Exactly. Oh, I get that. Um, <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. I get that. I mean, I get that. I think um, I would probably take you on a affirmation road. I would find the right affirmation for you that would be something that you want to repeat every day. Um, I probably also can do a grounding meditation for you. One, yeah, there's a wonderful grounding meditation you see in your cross legged, closing your eyes, and you imagine a strength in your spine and let, let that strength pull you up and breathe in through your nose, exhale through your mouth. And probably the number one mantra as you're breathing, you don't have to speak it, but you can think it, is I am completely safe in my body. Nice. Because a lot of that is, it's our belief system. And we have monkey mind. Everybody's monkey mind, right? And you can, you might go through these, here's the energies of the day, too. One day you're like, I am so good. I am so glad this happened, or I'm, 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 you know, I'm okay, I'm okay being alone. And the next day, you're kind of falling apart because it's part of life. So you want to develop a consistent habit where you're managing your adrenals because safety is all fight or flight. It's a big adrenal place. So you want to do all the things you need to do for your adrenals, but I'm trying to tell you, you know what you're doing there. But also belief systems, finding out. I am a big proponent of finding out those core belief systems that you have and doing away from it. So some of my core, uh, I'll just be there. I'll go there for you so you understand. I've often felt I'm alone. And I've had to kind of go back and go, where in my life did that start? I see if I can go back a little, you know, it's always a child. Mm -hmm. um, but then just do a reframe and say, you know, I have everything I need. It's right here. And I have a tribe. I have friendships. I have family. So it's just a belief system that has to be dealt with. Um, another one is, um, I'm not enough, right? That's another one for a huge one for a lot of people. Um, trust me, you are enough. I have, I have so much to offer. I'm enough. You know? But identifying the core belief is really, really crucial because it comes up in certain ways that we don't even know it comes up. Things trigger us on a daily basis. Oh my God, out there. If you go, oh, is that that core belief that's rearing his ugly head? Okay, it's, it's just monkey mind. It's just not true. But I think if we don't know what our core beliefs are, and I do like to take people through this journey of what core beliefs are, then I think it's really hard to, to get a hold of it. Because it's not just about like, oh, eat those vitamin C foods and you'll be great. You know, that'll, that'll definitely help, but it may not help improve safety. That's why I love this, because this tells you, like, you can be, like, my food is great. I'm, I'm right where I need to be. Uh, ooh, survival. What's going on there? And then you really have to ask yourself, what's going on there? Where did that come from? It didn't just happen. It's, you know, it's like an autoimmune. It's like years in the making. But how we, how it manifests, and how we see it, and how we deal with it is completely different. Awesome. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Um, <clears throat> this is a wonderful, um, I don't know what to call it, um, food, food spirit? Is that what yes, food, food spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the whole idea is really good, uh, especially for people who have no belief system, I think. Because a lot of, like, for me, I always look at my Bible. And I'm very content that way. Even when I meditate, I'm meditating on verses in the Bible. And it really takes me far. Well, there are a lot of people who are not like me. Wait, and I like this. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. So this is just the perfect thing for those type of people or people who know how to combine them with their religion. Right. You know, so this is just a wonderful I'm, I'm so glad that you yeah. like that. Yeah. I, 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 so. I feel the same way. Um, you know, religion is not something I get into because I don't really know what your religion is. I don't know what your belief is. Exactly. And, so, and it's not my place to go mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But that could even be a stressor for me. Mm -hmm. It could definitely be something right. that, you know, like, uh, you know, I, or I'm different from my family. I'm the black sheep. Mm -hmm. That's the, the one that I hear quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, you know, that creates a safety issue. Mm -hmm. So, 
get, yeah, I, I like this because it's, it's a safe, it's, yeah. it's, to be yeah. honest, it's, it's very, um, it's universal. Exactly. It can fit anybody. Mm -hmm. And it, again, what happens physically is often because of emotional, mental stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will tell you that for years I've had adrenal issues, for years. Now, I also witnessed a lot of things. When I lived in New York, I was there during 9-11. I watched my friends die in one day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had some adrenal issues, and then I got held up at gunpoint, and then, you know. Hi, so, <laughs> it's LA, New York. No. <laughs> it's gonna happen at some point. Um, but, but, you know, I left New York because I'm like, I was so adrenal, I was adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. I was exhausted, and just living that life was really hard. Mm -hmm. But also, there were other things that started to happen. Um, even though I was preparing my adrenals, and that was like 60% good, I was in a couple of relationships were not good. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get my adrenals healthy. And the only way that I could get them healthy was to not be in those relationships. And then all of a sudden, when I left, boom, oh my god, my, my adrenals so good. You know, all the supplements in the world didn't work. All the food in the world didn't work because it was energetic. And so that's why it's a hard conversation to have when somebody you know, says they're sick or they're dealing with toxins and you ask them where do they live and they live in Pasadena. And you're like, well, what, what am I supposed to do about that? <laughs> move. Well, I can't, I can't move. I've got a family here, I got this and I'm like, okay, so the next best thing is we have to do a detox four times a year and you have to go completely organic and you have to grab clean water, you have to have clean air. You know, uh, okay. But that's the physical side. But there might be an energetic side to all of that too. And it's individual. Everyone, you know, just like our DNA is individual and we, we have, to practice in a biochemical individuality way, right? Because no two people are the same. You'll never get the same answers across the board. Mm -hmm. So it's you might find one aspect is really, really good. That's why I don't like stuff. A test the root and say, oh, that whole number is 97. What does that mean? It means they're excessive, but where specifically, if we drill down, where are they excessive? What's going mm -hmm. on? They might be perfectly fine in one area. In another area, they're off the chart high or low. So I like to kind of drill down and see. Then I work backwards into the physiology. Are they adrenal fatigue? Do they have any challenges? Um, I have a foot problem. Oh, his feet are part of the immune system. Hmm. It's, it's not a perfect science, but it's really interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. And again, the whole mind, body, spirit because it does take all of them and they work together. Exactly. And I love your mm -hmm. comment too, because mm -hmm. many people do not have a faith base, mm -hmm. and yet mm -hmm. it is about energy and spirit. Mm -hmm. And we all have that. Yeah. And so, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you.